welcome to the Open Research Institute FPGA stand-up meeting uh, for the 12th of October, 2021. And what we will do today is go through what we did last week, what we're going to be doing next week on FPGA, um, primarily for the end-to-end -end demo that we're very interested in, in uh, seeing happen. Uh, whether or not you have any roadblocks um, or need any uh, resources. And um, I will hand it off to, to Mr. Williamson uh, to be the first speaker. Well, okay, I didn't do anything FPGA related this week. We did facilitate a demo of the, um, the DVBS2 downlink beacon at the San Bernardino Microwave Society, and that went well. But no actual FPGAs were harmed in the making of that demo. A lot of discussion about them, though. Yeah, that was that went really well. And we did get an offer of mountaintop space in Southern California for installing the beacon, uh, which definitely could involve some some FPGA work if we if we pressed forward. And we had a lot of discussions about the channels and the format and uh, getting people um, making it as accessible as possible, but also pressing forward with GSE and and making sure that that gets uh, kind of the spotlight. So plenty going on there. We have a, another demo coming up in um, tomorrow, actually, Wednesday at the DEF CON uh, 619-858 group. And that will be a completely different crowd. And I'm hoping to get uh, at least as good feedback that we got from, from SBMS. Um, yeah, so we have some questions about GSE versus MPEG and transport stream and whether or not we can maybe field two channels at the same time so that people with traditional or restricted receivers can use the beacon uh, with MPEG, um, but also provide a, a, a way for them to test and transition to GSE. So, all right, so hey, uh, Aaron, you have the floor. Hello. Um, so it feels like I've been playing catch up with Andre. I've been chasing down the platform he's developing on so that we have a common platform that we can do our work on. Um, so from last week, I, I did create an open CPI uh, support project for the Light Fury. Um, it still needs a, a little bit cleanup of the FPGA programming scripts, but it uses one PCI E lane and it which should be should be more than enough. And I also tested this, um, the, the FPGA itself is on a Thunderbolt 3 adapter, which is designed for NVMe SSDs, but it works for the FPGA as well. So I could connect it to my laptop and I can send and receive data to and from the FPGA. Um, so I, and I, in addition to that, I began implementing the encoder on open, as an open CPI HDL worker. Um, I did track down how the AXI TID config parameters were being set. And I believe there's, I have a path forward now of being able to um, consume the encoder inside an HDL, HDL worker for OpenCPI. Uh, next, for next week, I, I plan on getting the Light Fury support project out the door so that it can be used by others and then continue working on implementing the encoder. And then I have no roadblocks and I don't need any, any additional resources at this time. All right, thank you so much. All right, Tilak, you have the floor. Oh, great. Thank you. So, uh, so regarding the, the authentication or the, this work that what we have been doing. So, so I started studying the M17 protocol, uh, uh, trying to uh, see if I could implement their GRC files or the CPP libraries that which they have. So that uh, by understanding it better, I try to uh, make sure that we can do the modifications that we plan, like the adding of the authentication or testing how adherent uh, this modulation scheme of M17 is to any kind of interference pattern. Uh, with, with the, with the uh, experience I gained from the radio resilience competition, uh, where, I, where I got some pretty good uh, insights on how it could work. So, and also the, uh, to adding the other security measures we thought of. Uh, so, so I'm there at starting the M17, the libraries and how we could implement that. I think there is some uh, confusion about how they use their uh, error correction cores in that there, uh, the Galois based error correction core, or I think there is other error correction cores. So I'm just trying to understand how they implemented it. And apart from all of this work, I'm trying to parallelly see how we could put up a paper for October 30th the symposium. Uh, that's where I think I have to put across a basic uh, skeleton of how the paper would look like, like covering the prior art and our uh, suggested strategies and all. 
so so if, if you two guys i think uh, could see that uh, in the in the channel that we have i think uh, we we all could agree on that and see how we could best uh, try to publish that paper or how at least we could try to target for what date if it is possible so that's all yeah. okay yeah i think that's doable if you have a draft or questions or anything like that then then email is probably best and we're happy to help however we can and sure yeah if it, uh, the for the for the event on the 30th of october would be entirely appropriate uh, even if it's a kind of a preprint or, or preview. And then in terms of error correction coding, there is error correction coding for, for M17. So if there's any confusion or, or, or anything that needs to be asked, understood, um, that isn't clear from their protocol, uh, then we can certainly help with, with that uh, either on, on Slack or via email. And if it's something that we go, oh, um, well, that's, that's interesting, then we can ask them directly too. Uh, so so yeah, if there any any specific questions, we can start working on them right away. Okay. They do they do have a different error correction coding scheme for the for the uplink. So the uplink and the downlink in terms of error correction coding are completely separated. You know, so you know because that, that's the system that we have. Uh, so so don't don't worry too much. You know, it, if it if it looks completely different than the downlink, that's on purpose and and it, you know it it it's good. That's good news. Let's see. All right, Andre, you have the floor. Uh, hi. Hello there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So last week, um, yeah, I spent getting the my yeah, my local setup up and running, and I got the, yeah. The good news is it works. Uh, the bad news is I I realized that the engine is swapping thing. Uh, I might want to fix that because essentially, if I'm a user and I, you know, I'm dropping in the th the box and I'm connecting, I really don't want to care about the end. I just want the thing to work, uh, and I think it's not that difficult. It's just annoying, as in having to go back and fix. But anyways, so there is that, um, and then. Probably going to start looking at uh, uh, testing the GS, GSE encoding. Uh, uh, Thomas put some links to some reference implementations I can use. Uh, yeah, and basically start looking at other stuff in, in his um, very helpful block diagram. So, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. It's all uh, very. Great stuff. Um, so yeah, if, if if any of you all are not on Slack, then then please do, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, check those out. So it's good things. And yeah, the the big Indian versus little Indian thing. Um, well, it, we're not alone in having <laughs> <laughs> an issue. So I had nothing but empathy yeah. when I read that. Yeah, and I agree with your <laughs> um, your instinct is to well, you know, whatever whatever we need to do to make it easier to use and adopt is, you yeah. know, if it's something that we can do, then we 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 should. All right, do you need anything or any roadblocks? Yeah. Um, no, no, uh, not at this point. No, if. Okay, very good. All right, so yeah, for action items for me over the next week, there's a lot. Um, if we find out anything, we will find out plenty uh, from tomorrow night from presenting the work and talking about the end-to-end -end demo. Um, so we got a set of opinions and some offers of, of real assistance from San Bernardino Microwave Society, and we will get a different perspective from the DEF CON group tomorrow night. Um, and then all of that will be, we'll write it up and, and send it out and see if there's a, um, if, there, if there's anything that, that actually reaches as far back as the FPGA work. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's it from here. Anybody have any final comments before we close? All right, very I good. No, I, I don't. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you any questions, please uh, uh, email Slack, whatever, and we'll see you in the lab and on the internet. All right, thank All right. you. See you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.